And now we get to see new philosophies right. enter the building. One of them with us right now. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Uh, it's going great. How are you all doing? Uh, fantastic. Yeah. Your new offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, joining us uh, right now. Um, Coach, I mentioned uh, to listeners that we were going to have you on, and we have a bajillion questions. <laughs> <laughs> I know we don't have you for too long, but um, I'm sure that you've, you've heard a lot of these people so excited, so excited to just kind of see – uh, you know, what you have in store here, because you had such an electric offense with Washington. Um, and I know that it's a bit different, right? Like you're, you're right. dealing with the NFL in this case. You don't have all the same weapons. But is there stuff that you're hoping you can still translate over to the pros? I mean, you look at this wide receiver group. Yeah, I think we had three pretty good receivers at Washington and we got three pretty good ones here. So uh, it, it certainly starts there with the weapons that you have at your disposal. And we had two really good young tackles and obviously experienced quarterback room. Coach, um, a lot of people highlight your passing game, which they should, right? Um, one of the top passing games That's in the country the last terrible. couple of years. Where did you get that? I wore it just for you, Coach. Did you get that at Goodwill? No, nah, you know, I got it sent to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a Cougs uh, sweater for you guys. I almost you guys wore my UW one today. Uh, you should have, man. I know. I'm sorry. You, you know? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was, uh, <laughs> but, um, oh, man, I was distracted. Um, oh, your pass game. Uh, they always yeah. talk about your pass game, but the more I watch your offense, the more impressed I am with the run game, man. Like the Appreciate gap team that. stuff and, and the way you use that to kind of influence the defense you get the eyes going the wrong way right. um w when you started being a coordinator would you say you were a pass heavy guy a run heavy guy or do you kind of just take what the defense is giving you and go from there well I, I definitely think you have to analyze what the defense is weak at you know what can you attack you know where are the gaps in their scheme and for us we, we've always had um a really wide range as far as like when you look at gap scheme wide zone inside zone pin pull um, no pull power. We, we've done all that stuff. Um, even last year, you know, I, I thought we evolved into a different type of running team by the end of the season. So, which were ways to highlight the back that we had and the, and the alignment that we had, which we thought were, you know, athletic in the pin pull world, coupled with, you know, some scheme where we could work on no pull power. And um, so I think we, we do a great job being ready to run anything, honestly. And you gotta you gotta get good at stuff too, right? You can't be an inch deep and a mile wide, of course. But I think that our offense, you know, provides a lot of answers in the run game. Yep. You've had a really uh, traditional uh, history as far as having been a quarterback coach, wide receivers coach, but you've also coached offensive line as well. Do you feel like that impacts a lot of how you see offense and your philosophy today? It does. Uh, I've been really blessed in that. I mean that. I've, I've been very fortunate. Just. I don't think I, I necessarily – actually, I shouldn't say I don't think. I know – I didn't sit down at the beginning of my career and like, okay, this year I'm going to, you know, check this box, check this box. Um, I went where it was needed every uh, team I was on. And, you know, that O-line experience, you know, nine years in that room uh, really formulated a lot of the success I had later as far as translation in the quarterback room, understanding protection, having a good – you know, firm grasp on the run game, but then still having the background and skill to be able to put it all together with the quarterback. So I've been really lucky that way that it helps my vision of the game. Obviously, you had some great receivers over there at UW. Um, you got Polk. You got, obviously, Adunze. But I, I was watching film on just McMillan, and I go, all right, man. I'm looking at JSN, and I go, he got some McMillan in him. I think McMillan oh, yeah. might be a little faster than JSN, but JSN's such a smooth route runner. When you looked at the personnel here, um, was that part of your decision-making, saying, look, man, I got three dogs, a receiver, <laughs> I got some running backs, I can do something with this personnel group? No, there, there's no question. When I was looking at, you know, who is here and, and the tools that are here at uh, Seattle, I thought that there was a lot of familiarity in what would be able to be applicable in the system. So, And I do. I think 11 here looks a little bit like 11 there. You know, those are good option route runners, guys that if you can get – somebody flat footed or a nickel or safety on those guys, they can highlight their skills. And then you got the big body decks and DK and Rome. And, um, but still, I think that's the thing that was amazing about Rome. And I, and when I watch DK, I think the same thing is like, these guys are not just nine runners, right. you know, like these guys are, are crossing route, they're middle field open, they're sitting in zones, they're really versatile for big guys. And then, you got the experienced route runner in the Z. You know, Lockett can do all those things. I mean, you can move that guy about anywhere. So excited about that. Yep. I'd like to personally thank you for what was an amazing fourth down call. Uh, in the <laughs> I was going to ask Cup. about that, too. That hurt my heart. Oh, well, that's a, <laughs> great well, call, though. A great call. Do you consider yourself kind of an aggressive play caller? I loved it. <laughs> 
Um, I think when when you need to be, you, you have to be ready to be, you know, and I think that where players and teams can assimilate to you a little bit is that when they know you're not playing for the tie or not to lose, your players will play more aggressive. Now, we have to do that within the parameters of the game and be smart and not foolish, um, but certainly in, in moments like that, you want to play to win the game. Um, there are times in college where you can just out-personnel some guys, right? Mm-hmm. Like, look, our guys are just better. Let's throw it up and let's make right. a play. I would imagine you get to the NFL, um, there's probably less of that going on. When you look at the defensive personnel, you compare it to college football, what do you see some of the challenges might might be for you calling yeah. this issue? No, I think that's a great point. I think that there's you know less opportunity for you to just – severely expose somebody defensively because there's so many good football players in the league. So I think you got to find other ways to expose the defense, you know, whether it's leverage or numbers or whatever it is. But I think the mismatch piece is far less likely in the NFL than it is college. Uh, I would imagine, you know, we were talking about how stressful the life of a coach can be. And in bump mentioned, of course, the life of a coach's family, I would imagine for you guys, Last month and a half has been pretty hectic, you know, not yeah. knowing exactly where you would end up. But you clearly had a love for Seattle. You made that very clear yeah. uh, when when you were here with Washington. Is your family kind of happy to to know that you guys are here in Seattle? Yeah, no, uh, my my wife and daughter are extremely excited to be here, and, <laughs> and uh, you know, it was hard because there was relationships that were just starting to happen in Alabama. You know, and there's people that we're getting to know, and um, it was just a, it was a difficult process to go through, and and I think the the timing mechanism between the NFL and college is what makes it so hard. If there was a cleaner line there and, you know, we could have just let one side play out before the other, it would have been a lot easier. But, um, you know, there, there's really three parts of that there's the Washington part, there's the Alabama part. And, right. you know, there was my relationship with Mike. So you just had to let it play out and make the best decision you could. And, and, you know, I couldn't be more excited with how it ended up. I love how, um, just one of your schemes, like your mesh, concept right yeah. it's multiple you run it from tight wide bunch uh, you motion guys out yeah. and i watch the way michael pennis goes through his progression i watch <laughs> how people hit their spots and i go this is just a well-coached team right yeah. uh you, you see the similarities in, in everything that they do when you run the mesh concept i think of what mike mcdonald wants to do and everyone else wants to do here it's about communicating and teaching your guys so when you sat down with mike did you see a similarity in just the way you guys go about teaching and preparing your guys for this a week of practice or even games on Saturdays and Sundays? Yes, uh, absolutely. I think that's a good observation. I think, Mike, you know, where we, we're speaking the same language is you're trying to make your guys as multiple as possible against as many things for him defensively and us attacking as many things as possible and still making it easy for your guys. So we would always say easy for us, hard for them. Now, that doesn't mean – you know, be simple, you know, but if you can find ways to get your guys to operate faster and more effectively and, and something that they do every week and they can, you know, do it out of another formation, but it looks really different to the defense for us. That's what we always felt was our advantage. But at the same time, have enough one offs and wrinkles that, you know, you kind of keep people live on, on their toes. We've naturally, of course, because of your transition from uh, college to the pros, been talking about the comparison between the NFL and NCAA. And, and Bump, you're almost part of this conversation. I, both of you obviously have insight here. Um, Bump mentioned he sees a lot more similarities between today's college game and the pros. Do you see kind of a blending of those ideas that it's, it feels less for a far apart than it used to? Yeah, I, I think there, there's parts that do. And, and there's certainly parts that, that are not. You know, you don't. I think with the value in possessions and the number of times that you actually get the football in the NFL, there, there's a, I don't want to say that you're wasteful in college with the number of plays that you can run and, and that you're frivolous, but to some point, some teams are and have had even success at the college level of just running plays to run plays. Um, I think you have to be a lot more focused and a lot more dutiful with your time and, and the amount of energy you put into each concept and how many snaps you're actually going to get in a game. You know, and, and that's where I think the number of possessions and how you get limited in that basis is so important in the NFL. So that's where you see the the possession control and things like that that are so critical in the NFL. Last year you coached one of the best or the best offensive line in the country in college football. Uh, this year, well, last year we had a, a more consistency on this offensive line this year with injuries or whatnot. Things yeah. happen with this O-line. How excited are you just to get your hands on those guys? Because I would imagine you look at the receivers, and obviously everyone has things to work on, but you look at that box, and, you know, it all starts and ends with that box, man. Yeah. What do you see with that O-line? What are you excited about? 
Well, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, I think, you know, having two young tackles that, that can set the anchor on the outside is, is really exciting. I know those guys got banged up a little bit throughout the course of the season. And, you know, I think the your ability to have quality depth in this league will be pivotal for your success. And I think when you look at those two guys, it, it really starts with them, you know, and, and 67 cross, I think is, I mean, sky's the limit for that kid. He, he's phenomenal. I think he could be really good. And you know, expand his game this year and, you know, just the consistency in play and, you know, getting more physical and finishing all the time. I, I see some flashes of really, really special group there. Uh, we just got to get it to be, you know, more consistent and, and I think they'll do great. I would imagine you're also really excited related to working with the guys uh, that are working up front with working with Ken Walker, mm-hmm. getting your hands on Zach Charbonnet and kind of seeing what you can do with this run game. Bump mentioned earlier, we saw this elite passing offense, but it's not like the run game wasn't also impressive. And now you've got these great weapons. I mean, yeah. have you already started thinking of like, how soon do you start drawing up plays you want to use? Well, I think uh, <laughs> when coach got done on the back of my contract, I had you're a couple starting of them, so. <laughs> just penciling him in. <laughs> but no, you're, you're spot on the the two backs you know and, and really that whole room but specifically you know Kenneth and and uh Zach those guys are they're special backs and you know nine's ability to change direction and get vertical is, is different than a lot of guys and they both have good hands out of the backfield um I think Kennedy is going to do a great job in that room just in the development and mentorship of those backs and he's seen so many good backs and done such a good job over the years that I think that room's going to take off. Last one I got for you, because I need to know, right? That fourth down call on the Apple Cup. <laughs> Great one. Again, a fantastic Great call. call. I couldn't be Great mad. At it. it went down, and I go, hell of a call, man. Uh, <laughs> when you decided to call that play, your guys line up, and you see how WSU lines up. In your head, did you think, yeah, we're golden. We got yeah, this. 20, yeah, 20, 20 plus. Yep. Yep. Felt really good, man. That, that, it ain't that a great feeling? Well, like was, we got the look we wanted. What was crazy? It was a uh, it was a play that that really it was in the goal line section. It wasn't mm-hmm. even for there. So I pulled it out of there and and you know gave the guys a heads up because we had a timeout. What was going on? Um, but we had been kind of in that double wing formation throughout the game and really saw them attacking the edge of the formation. Mm-hmm. So I felt pretty good about it. I mean, Kalen had called the timeout and tried to do the draw them off sides. Yep punt and then he came back you still feel good about grub i was like absolutely i couldn't couldn't feel better and he's like we got another time out and i'm like no we're good nice so it was it was great guys executed it to the t so it was it was nice uh last question for us and then we we gotta let you get out of here and uh, this is related to what you're gonna do when you get out of here what's next for you i mean you've got such a an interesting off season ahead as an entire coaching staff and then for you yourself there's so much to work with and and it's not like starting from scratch but like God, there's so much room to just do everything that you want. What, what's next for you? <laughs> well, I think right now is, you know, familiarity um, in the staff and our players, you know, just so watching personnel tapes, seeing yeah. what we have, how it applies to the scheme. And then from there, you know, you're really working on the installation process for phase one and phase two and phase three of OTA. So that's the next real step is the application of the installation when we aren't in a dead period and we can actually have contact with the guys. Um, and that part's really exciting, thinking about them getting back here and getting to work with them, and just seeing them, honestly, and getting to meet them. So I'd, you know, I'd already talked to Gino and Drew a little bit. They're both down in Florida, and maybe uh, just saying hi to those guys a little bit more, but just getting to know them, honestly, yeah. like just as people. Take a trip to Florida. That's right. Get away from the rain. <laughs> go down, go down there and say, say yeah, what's exactly. up. Play some golf. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. He is the Ox offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb, kind enough to join us to uh, to give us some some insight. I am uh, surprised how willing you were to really talk about offensive concepts, and yeah. it's going to be a f- fascinating. They got some season. film on us. I think they they know what we might do. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Thank you again, Coach. We nice appreciate job. it. Appreciate you it. Bet.